Shalom, my Israelite family, scattered to the four corners of the earth. So I got a nice little fun discussion that I want to do with you all. I'm going to call this one Negroes. You are the real Jews. Here is the proof. Now, if you're anything like me and you like to do extensive research just on our culture, our background, our history, you know, and it's fun studying the scriptures. And we know Zion. We know who we are according to the scriptures, and especially according to Deuteronomy 28. We know by the evidence of the things that we're seeing around us. And everything that the Most High said would happen in his word is being played out in these last days. And we see it all around us. So it's no brainer, saints. We know who we are. We know that we are the chosen people of the Most High. And I'm talking to the awakened ones. And many of our people are still waking up. You know, and, and a lot of more are going to wake up at their appointed time. We just can't force the hand of the Most High. But if you're new and you're just waking up, I think you're going to really enjoy this discussion because I got some exciting things I want to share with you. Now, some of you all have done like DNA tests, things like that, to really show where it came from. But I'm going to be honest with you, brothers and sisters, I don't really trust those genealogy things because they're ran by the Gentiles and it ain't no telling what kind of tricks they be playing. But what have you, many of you have done that and it's been proven that your bloodline goes all the way back to the real Jews. But I'm going to show you something else too that you can research and it's going to show you. You can actually look up, there's certain sites that you can look up and it's going to show you all the registries of names of the slaves that came over that had, that actually had Israelite names. That's right, that had Israelite names. So that's what kind of we're going to be talking about today. We're going to just get into that. We're going to pretty much be in the book of Deuteronomy. I'm going to stay in the book of Deuteronomy for the duration of this discussion. And, you know, it's not going to be that long, but it's going to be fun. I think this is going to be a good tool and a resource for you to do further research on your own. And, you know, when our forefathers came over here on slave ships during the Atlantic slave trade, there are a lot of things that was lost. And one of those, most importantly, were our names. The names that we had before our forefathers came over here to the Americas, not only the Americas, but America, South America, all the Caribbean islands. You know, the Atlantic slave trade wasn't just conducive, conducive to America. It was all over. And once they got a hold to that free labor, these Gentiles, they spread the wealth throughout the whole world. So our people are everywhere. We're scattered all over. The Negroes scattered to the four corners of the earth. And so everybody, just, just about every nation benefited from slavery. All that free labor. You know, and that's why when Trump, when he says make America great again, well, at what point of time was America great? The only time that it was great, it was great for the Gentiles when they had all that free labor. That's when it was great. And that's what they're referring to when they say make America great again. They, they're, they're saying, they're putting out a coded message, let us bring back slavery again. That's all they're saying. But we know that's not going to happen. This is the last captivity, brothers and sisters. This is it. It ain't going to be no more slavery. It ain't going to be no more captivity. We're living in a time where it's either for our people it's either do or die. And we got to put that hand to the plow. Because yeah, our people are waking up. And they can't hide the truth no longer. They spent trillions trying to do it. But all that in vain. Still, the Most High is using his spirit to wake up his people. Incredible. Alright, so with that being said, if you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And like I said earlier, well, we're gonna we're gonna remain in the book Deuteronomy 28. We're not gonna go nowhere else. So we're gonna start with verse one. Now, the agreement was this: if Yah's people had kept the law, they would have been blessed beyond measures. Because when you read about the blessings from uh, verses one through 14, the Most High lets us know, hey, if this if this what our forefathers would have done then we wouldn't be in a situation right now but because they broke the laws 
That's what happened. So look at verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently, diligently unto the voice of Elohim, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that Elohim will set thee on high above all nations. So you see where the Gentiles are now. They're over us. They're ruling over us. They own all the good land. They own all the companies. They own everything. All the money. All the economic that is flowing through, these, through the world system. They control all of it. And you can read the rest of these blessings all the way down through uh, 14. But it just goes to show you, saints, that had our forefathers would have obeyed the Most High, we wouldn't be in this situation. We wouldn't be at the bottom like we are today. So when we pray, we have to not only pray for the sins, for our sins, but we got to pray for the sins of our forefathers constantly. You know, because they jacked us up. They put us in a spot where we shouldn't have been in. All right. So uh, let's go. I'm going to go over a couple more verses. Let's look at verse 37. Let's look at 37. And it says, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither Elohim shall lead thee. It says, Among all nations. Now let's look at the gravity of this because we are scattered to the four corners of the earth, right? So our people are everywhere. We're all over. So it seems like we're the minority because we're just so we're, we're so scattered. We seem to the rest of the world that we're few in number, but we're not. The Bible says that we're like the sands of the sea. It's just the fact that we're just scattered. That's all. And because of that, that's why a lot of you all always complaining to me or on the comment boards that you have nobody to worship with because, you know, you don't know who to worship with. And it's because we are so scattered. We're all in the same boat. You know, we all find we all find ourselves having to worship Elohim. We're not alone. We're, we're really not. We're, we're not alone because the spirit is with us. And if you worship the most high spirit and truth, he is with he is with us. So we all are worshiping in spirit and truth. You know, we're just far apart. That's all. And, you know, when you look at that, then it makes sense. Why? OK. Why are people feel like they may be alone? And, you know. So you just, you gotta, you gotta understand that. And that's a result of sin. That's a result of our forefathers turning their backs on the most high. So yes, we're still living out the curses to an extent, but don't worry Zion, because the most high is going to bring us back together again. But let's look at this. Let's look at verse 37 again. And thou shalt be coming an astonishment and a proverb and a byword among all nations, whether Elohim shall lead thee. So he led us all over the continent as a scattered people why because our forefathers broke the commandments it's very simple it's physics one-on-one -on -one. you disobey you got to pay the penalty and that's what happened so this this byword in proverbs and we all know what that is that's you know when they call us niggers coons monkeys have they not been doing that in this time and age ever since trump's been in office it's been increasing you know, and the Bible says that we will be hated among all nations. What part of that you all don't get? But yet we still have our people that think they can save the Gentiles. You know, and they're constantly, constantly letting you know to your face, I don't like you, nigger. But you turn around and you just smile at them and lick them in the face like dogs would do. Like when kneeling down with their tails wagging between their legs. That's some of our people. That's the mentality of some of our people. And that's because that's the result of us being destroyed mentally. And some of us just don't know no better. And we have to come out of that mindset. And you know, when it's time for us to be gathered up, it's not going to be on our terms. The Most High is going to gather us up. So we, we shouldn't be taking it upon ourselves to try to get followers and then Talking about, hey, we got to go back to our land on our own. We got to go to Africa on our own. You got too many people who think they know more than the Most High. They think they smarter than the Most High. 50 years ago, you had this false prophet, this wicked man by the name of Ben Ami. 
and he took a bunch of deceived Hebrews over to Israel thinking that they were going to repopulate and take over the land. But the Bible does not lie, brothers and sisters. The Bible says that that land is trodden, our land will be trodden underfoot by the Gentiles. They went over there and they're considered as outcasts until this very day, 50 years ago, and they're still considered as outcasts. And there's nothing, there's been nothing but misery over there in Demona. Those little kids are being raped and molested and all kind of abuse going on over there. And that should let you know that that was not the will of the Most High. You don't just take up your arms and take up on your own and force the hand of the Most High. You, you can't do that. It's not going to happen. The Most High is going to deliver us on His terms. So when He gathers, He's going to gather us up. And He's going to use His angelic host to gather His people up from the four corners of the earth. It is His promise. So we got to take a chill pill, Zion, and stop trying to jump ahead of the Most High, do our own thing. Jeremiah 32, 37 says this, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whether I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. Those folks aren't dwelling safely over there in Demona. All kind of misery going on. So the Most High is going to do that. And we ain't got to worry about it because we, we serve a powerful Elohim. So moving forward. So now what I want to show you is I want to get into some of the registries because I want to show you uh, some of the sites. And then we're going to get into one of them, a couple of them. And I'm going to type in some names, some Hebrew names. And you're going to see with your own eyes uh, the names of our forefathers that were brought over here. The names that they had before it was all erased and all that kind of stuff so let me show you a couple of sites here so and don't worry don't worry I'm gonna leave the link to this site so you can go on and you'll see you'll be able to get uh, the 10 sites and everything it's like the 10 database for the slave gene genealogy research and everything so and you know this this is really fun if you really want to just on your own time just search through them and type in those Hebrew names, you, you'll, you'll see them. And you may be able to find some people who owned your ancestors as well. So you got the Digital Library on America, Slavery. Uh, that's a really good one. And I've had this for a while and everything. So, and see, I just assume that people know or knew about this. But sometimes, you know, i got to always not assume that everybody always know. So you got Large Slaveholders of 1860. Um, that's, a, that's a really good one. And they have a lot of good information in there that you can you can look up. And then you have the records of the Southern Claims Commission. So when you type that, you can also, like I said, if you're you have a, your slave name too, you can look up your slave name and you can find out who owns your ancestors. You got slavery era insurance registry. That's a really good one. America slave narratives. You know and. This is the most popular one right here, the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database. And that's the one that we're going to be looking at. And we're going to have some fun with that because I'm going to show you some things you can do with that. And you can actually look up and see the names of our forefathers that had Israelite names. You know, and it's, and it's amazing because, you know, the Gentiles, they kept records of this stuff. They kept records of this stuff. You would think that they would destroy it completely, but, you know, the Most High is powerful. And the Most High is not going to allow our history to be erased. I don't care how hard they try, I don't care how hard they, how much money they spend and what they try to do. They cannot hide our identity. They cannot fight against the spirit of the Most High. You, you, just, you just can't. You have certain things the wicked can do, but when it comes to his people, his word says that we are still the apple of his eye. So we're going to go ahead and get into the registries now, and I'm going to show you some really cool stuff here. All right, Zion, let's have a little fun here. So we're going to deal with the Atlantic Slave Trade site here. So I'm going to read this little portion. It's at the beginning. The Transatlantic Slave Trade database has information on almost 36,000 slaving voyages. That's quite a few. That forcibly embarked over 10 million Africans for transport to the Americas between the 16th and the 19th century. The actual number is estimated 
to have been as high as 12.5 million. Now we know it was a lot more than that, Zion. The database and the separate estimates interface offers researchers, students, and general public a chance to rediscover the reality of one of the largest forced movement of people. You know, I want to say property because that's what we consider. We consider property in the world history. So this is some pretty in-depth stuff here. And like I said, go and peruse through the other sites I showed you, through the 10 other sites too, and just peruse through that too and play around with it. And when you begin to discover the names of our forefathers, you're gonna be like, man, you know, this is some good stuff. So let's go to resources, and we're gonna go to African Name Database. And you click on that, and then it's gonna take you, and you're gonna type in, and we're gonna type in the word Yah, okay? We're gonna type in the word Yah, just to get an idea, but just look, you, you, you can look at it now, you'll see just different names, things like that. It's gonna tell you if it's a man or a woman, which ship it was on, what have you. So let's type in Yah, and let's see what it pull. Let's see what it pulls up here. And you know, and I've always been having fun about it. You can type in any Israelite name; it's gonna pull it up. Now look at all these names here. They have Yah, and why do you think that our people were named Yah? Because we belong to the Most High Yah. You know, look at um, this one right here. Twenty-seven. The man, of course, in the Ebu tribe. Ebu. You hear me, saints? Ebu. And you'll see a lot of those down there with uh, Ibu tribes and different other tribes that were Israel. Because when our forefathers fled from Jerusalem in 70 AD, they, they fled all throughout Africa. Not only Africa, there were some other parts of the country that people fled in, but they fled mostly throughout Africa. Why do you think they did that? Because their identity could be hidden more accurately if they went to Africa. Now I want you to just look, take the time to look through some of these um, names here. This is simply amazing, Zion. I mean, like I said, I've, I've had this for some time now, and you know, I do have to apologize because sometimes I just assume that you all already know uh, these types of things. But I have to realize there's a lot of people that are still waking up, and they just they may just they may not know. So I have to always be careful about assuming that you all know this kind of stuff. So, but just you in your free time get get the time i'm telling you zion get the time and go through these sites just type in different israelite names and you're going to see exactly what i'm talking about and look at all these names that has yah in them you know and for those of you who follow me on twitter you know i do daily devotions on twitter you can follow me at you at yehuda uh, daniel yehuda and that is my israelite name you know my my first name is daniel that was given to me at birth so I kept that and I added Yehuda, um, Ben Yehuda. So it's Daniel Ben Yehuda, which means the son of Yah and who gives praises to the Most High Yah and whose judge is only Yah. So that's what my name means. And you know, and whatever Israelite name that you've given yourself, your surnames, just type it in this database and you will see that your forefathers had the same names. And when I say our forefathers, I'm talking about all the sons and daughters of the Most High. So it's really interesting. Now you can do the same thing. Uh, type in Ben. Ben. Um, so if you type in Ben, you can see all the names with Ben, which means son of. So, and that's why, you know, majority, you'll, you'll see a lot of surnames Ben because we belong to the Most High or the son of Yah. So just look through this. I mean, it's very interesting, and I'm telling you, and this is stuff that they can't they can't hide. And when you go through and you start realizing the truth, like wow, so our forefathers had all these Israelite names. Well, how come this wasn't put in our history books? How come the Gentiles did not tell us this in school? Well, of course they won't tell you. You think that they're going to tell you and admit and who you are? Or who your ancestors are? Why do you think as growing up in this society, why do you think that that our history only stopped after uh, prior to slavery, our history was, was, was gone? We couldn't track anything prior to slavery until the Most High used the Spirit to wake us up. And now we can go all the way back to Noah. 
and before. So that goes to show you that no one, no one can tell you who you are, but the Most High Yah only, and that's through His Spirit. And this awakening that's happening all over the world, this is phenomenal. I mean, this ain't like the Islam movement that was going on back in the 60s, and that ain't nothing. That was all false and fallacies. You know, what's happening right now with the Most High, this is the real deal, Zion. This is the real deal because we're waking up in this last hour and the Most High is showing us all this truth, all this concrete evidence that still remains. All we got to do is just, we just got to take the time to search. And that's our problem. A lot of us don't like to read. We don't like to research. We don't like to study. And many of you have a bad habit of just taking somebody else's word for it. You got to stop that, Zion. You got to get out of that habit. Many of our people have become so spiritually lazy that they don't want to take the time to do the research. And like stuff like this, just looking up registries and just, just digging, just digging to see what the names of our forefathers really were when they came over here on slave ships. And like I said, they couldn't destroy everything. The Gentiles, they kept this stuff and they still got records of this kind of stuff. And this is a lot more than what we're seeing right here, Zion. It's a lot more. You know, this is just a small portion of what we're seeing. So again, the Israelite names that you're giving yourself, just type that in and have fun with it. And it's going to tell you when they came over, the ships they came on, what year they came over on, came came uh, came over to. I mean, it's very, very interesting. Very, I mean, this is, this is some really good stuff. And I think every awakened Israelite should really take the time to dig into their history and to search these databases you know you know and all these databases just confirms Deuteronomy 28 it just confirms the scriptures of what the scriptures were really saying when you read in Deuteronomy 28 68 you know we should go to Egypt again in ships it wasn't talking about the literal Egypt back in Africa it was talking about America South America and all over the Caribbeans. That's your spiritual Egypt. Who, who, and what is this world run by? Run by is run by the wicked. The hands are given, the world is given into the hand of the wicked. Job 9, 24. So Babylon is everywhere. So wherever our people are scattered to, that's where Babylon is. Spiritually, its ways, its customs, its, its religions, it's pagans all of it so you know this this like i said it just confirms and they're not teaching this in the sunday churches you're not going to hear td jakes talk about this kind of stuff you're not going to hear pastor take your dollar talk about this stuff they want to keep you ignorant they want to keep you blind so they can keep taking your money and keeping you deceived gonna cause you to lose out on the kingdom and burn with the rest of the heathens. But see, that's why we got to take it upon ourselves to study this kind of stuff. And do the research because they're not going to give it to you. They're just not. I mean, knowledge is increasing like never before, Zion. I'm talking about with our people who are waking up. They're learning faster and quicker. You know, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. But that's only from the Spirit of the Most High. While we're gaining so much knowledge. So... I pray that you were edified, you know, wanted to just keep this kind of short to kind of give you the tools and resources. So your homework, Zion, is for you to go click on the link and go to these databases and just have fun with it. Look up some names and everything and you're going you're gonna to be amazed at what you find. And hey, take it even further. You know, when you're, if you live in the big cities like Chicago or something like that, go to one of them historic libraries. And ask them about those slave registries. I bet you they got them. I bet you they got them. You can get a photocopy of them and everything. So, and if you've been to, and if you've seen anything like that, leave a comment or leave a link or something. I, li I, like, I like to see that too. So, with that being said, I'm going to leave you with Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of Elohim and have the faith of Hamashiach. So, saints... I say happy feast days and shalom and stay strong.